form. I'll give you an example, right? I was on tour during the year and I was in Derby one night, right? I just ordered an ordinary gig in Derby and there were three guys in the front row. Guy there, guy there, guy there, right? And I spoke to that guy, as you do. How are you? What's your name? What do you do? The man in question explained to me he was a performance analyst for the Nottingham Police Force. <laughs> which is like one of these ridiculous modern jobs that no one has a clue what it means, right? Uh, and I said, really? What the? And I said, okay. And I just had a bit of chat and then moved on to skip the guy in the middle went to that guy and said, what do you do? And your man goes, well, I'm a lorry driver, but at the weekends, I play Robin Hood in a tourist attraction called the Robin Hood Experience, right? <laughs> so we have a crack of the whole twang element of all that, right? And I was about to move on when the thought struck me, what am I doing? I've got Robin Hood and the Sheriff of Nottingham sitting together in the front row. <laughs> a bit of crack with the two of them and then moved on, finished the first half, came back for part two. We're just standing on doing the part two stuff when the first bloke, the copper bloke, does this. <laughs> waves at you. No one waves at you when you're on stage. There's rarely a situation where you have to stop the guy telling the jokes, right? But he waves at me and I went, what? And he points to the guy in the middle, the guy I hadn't even spoken to, and goes, ask him his name. <laughs> So I'm standing there, what the? and I went to the guy and said, what's your name? And your man kind of gingerly goes, eh, it's Arthur Merryman. <laughs> Genuinely, without any setting up, I had Robin Hood, the Sheriff of Nottingham, <laughs> and the Merry Men sitting in the front row of my living room. Who knows what anything is glorious that we will be possibly having a chat with you. There are others, by the way, they sprinkle these audience for some ludicrous reasons with in quote, massive quotation marks, some of you. Famous faces, massive in here, coming in here, bumping your way up a couple of lists. You're not. Get back down to D. Okay. <laughs> there are, and there's like, in fact, there's even a local hero. James DeGale apparently is here. Where's James DeGale? Good to have you here, James. James, you're a local, aren't you? You are you're a Hammersmith boy yourself, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Have you got the gold medal on you? No. No, good man yourself, that's wise, right? Still be showing it off. <laughs> it's a bit tacky, you know what I mean? Like whatever. But man, you're from Hammersmith. You went, you won a gold medal. Look at you tonight, you're back in Hammersmith. That's fantastic. What a journey. You're the only boxer in the world who fought his way back into the ghetto. <laughs> James, I, you're not even saying anything, you're just eyeing me up for weaknesses, aren't you? You're just kind of going, <laughs> oh, anywhere, anywhere about me will be fine. You're looking forward to 2012, James, are you? Yeah. Yeah, 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 you're going to win? You're going to win? Yeah, yeah, going to win big? In many ways, by the way, in the 2012 Olympics, Ireland are the winners of the 2012 Olympics because we don't have to pay for it. So, uh, <laughs> thanks for that. I say that, I only live down the road, like whatever, my council taxes as much as anyone else, they're paying for an Olympic with council taxes. It'll be held bi-weekly. So, <laughs> Anyway, who else do we have in here? Hello, Hazel Irving, how are you? Where's Aggie, by the way? Hello, how are you? Yeah, how clean is your house, Aggie? Is it a tip? I bet it is. <laughs> you never open your house up, Aggie. You're probably sitting in a room flicking snot at a wall for the entire time you're there. <laughs> Cleaning is vital. I understand that completely. I've, I have a massive... No, I'm kind of witch on some of her, because I know that it is a major concern for people, just in terms of public health, that stuff be clean, 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 clean. Here's my question for you, right? Because, you know, I'm not saying we're cleaning too much, but when? When, I'll do this melodramatically, when will we ever, Aggie, win the war on bacteria? <laughs> We're up to 99.9% .9 now, according to the ads. <laughs> Surely there's only one small final push that we can eradicate that last 0.1% of bacteria, which is clogging up our kitchen work surfaces at the moment. <laughs> and I mean the bad bacteria, not the good bacteria, no. There's been some sort of propaganda war where we lured bifidus digestivum over to our team. <laughs> what happens if you pour Dettol into a Yakult? <laughs> How many of you have ever played with the Wii? <laughs> that doesn't count, right? <laughs> this is a Wii game. Ooh, I'm stroking a pony. That's a Wii game, right? Oh, I'm feeding sugar cues to a unicorn and it's going to pull out rainbows that I can paint onto Mario's house. <laughs> That's not gaming. This is gaming. Oh my God, I'm in a gun battle. Which one of these buttons isn't crouch? <laughs> Every game involves crouching. You're always crouching behind oil barrels or conveniently placed little walls. You're always crouching. But they put the crouch button in different places on different games and you get panicked in the middle of a space marine laser battle and you're pressing any button at all and suddenly your man is just waddling around the battlefield. <laughs> just staring up at you going, Jesus, press anything. Ain't not toggle maps. 
There's a game called Metal Gear Solid where you play a character called Snake. Yes. And when Snake dies, the camera pulls cinematically up from above him, and the voice of the man Snake has been speaking to on his comms unit goes, Snake, Snake, Snake! <laughs> Every time he dies. <laughs> when I play as Snake, he dies a lot. <laughs> but the man's sadness seems undiminished by the regularity with which he has to mourn Snake. <laughs> you think once or twice he'd go, Ah, Snake. <laughs> You think there'd be some sort of debriefing session in this international espionage organization where they go, Jesus, Mick, you're very disappointed about the death of Snake, aren't you? <laughs> well, he's one of the best agents we've ever... He was not, Mick. We've looked back over the mission logs. His behavior in the field was erratic at best. <laughs> he spent most of the time just waddling around the battlefield for no good reason. Just waddling around. He was toggling maps, then items, then weapons, then weapons, then items, then maps. He didn't know where he was going. He had to get behind that. He couldn't get behind it. He kept running at it. He'd run at it, and then he'd try running at it again. <laughs> he ran at it once, he missed. He had to run around in a little circle. <laughs> he tried jumping at it, jumping. Then he tried touching it, touching it. Then jump and touch, jump and touch, jump, crouch and touch, jump, crouch and touch. Then he looked up, then he looked down. Then he picked up a crowbar, then he put the crowbar down. Then he looked up, then crouch, weapons, items, items, crouch, crouch, not crouch, crouch, weapons, items, items, items. A robot attacked him, he gave him his rations. <laughs> He's the worst agent we've ever had. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> that reminds me very, very quickly of a story, by the way. As a national trait, there are unusual national traits that countries have, right? And the Irish have a very weird... Any Irish here, by the way? Fabulous. And we're good people and we're the backbone of this country, so don't give out to us, right? Uh, <laughs> but one thing we have which we can't do, bizarrely, is we can't, as a nation, scuba dive, right? <laughs> it's just this weird thing we have, right? And it just... In the I learned this because I met a couple of scuba diving instructors and they said, no, 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 you people, you just can't do it, right? You're the worst nation in the world at scuba. You're the most difficult to teach. This is the bizarre piece of trivia I've ever picked up about Ireland. We're appalling at scuba diving, right? There are landlocked African nations who are better in the water than we are. <laughs> And you'd think, well, you know, it's an island nation, but we were never really one to use the waters around us. In Ireland, we viewed the oceans and seas with a relative amount of suspicion because they were cold, and that's where the English came from. <laughs> Frankly, we'd be happy to brick up the oceans and leave them be. Yeah. <laughs> but part of the way it manifests itself is, and the way it did for me is, when you go into the water, there's a test you have to do if you get a little bit of water in your mask where you have to clear it out by tilting the mask forward and you breathe through your nose. You're nodding. You've done this, lady in the front row, have you? You know, yeah, look at you nodding in kind of a, yes, it's the most trivial thing in the world, right? I did it, right? I'm in the water. I let a little bit of water into the mask. A tiny bit goes up my nose. And I panic like an eight-year-old child. And I go, flip this! I'm out of here! This is nonsense! This is not natural! What the hell am I doing down here? Fish? Who cares? about fish. I don't want to see fish in their mouth. Give me on, on a plate in batter with chips. That's what I'll see fish. Thank you very much. And I shot out of the water going, feck the bends. I don't care how much nitrogen is trapped in my bloodstream. I need to get out of here now. I need to get to dry. I exploded out of the water like a dolphin. Flung off the mask. Went, oh, thank God I'm alive. And then I looked around and I'm in a swimming pool in a meter full of water. <laughs> The rest of the first day class are just below the surface going, what's wrong with him? And the guy is doing the hand sign for, he's Irish. They're shite at this. Uh. Can I apologise to every woman in this room for the ludicrous shite that you've had foisted upon you in the name of what we find horny? Some of which I know you only do in a kind of... Because you think it's kind of an ironic little joke. You know all that kind of boo 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 doo shit, right? That we can, <laughs> that we can occasionally get you to do because you think it's a joke. You're going, ha, 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 this is kind of a funny joke, isn't it? And we're going, yeah, yeah, just keep doing it, right? Uh... <laughs> no, but you're, you're enjoying this on an ironic level. Sure, whatever, just sing Santa Baby one more time. <laughs> I mean, lingerie is a perfect example of an entire global industry based around this not 
ludicrous clothing, right? If you're ever with a woman and she comes out dressed in lingerie and goes, is this what you like, is it? Is this, is this is what you like, is it? You never feel more like an ape in a simian research laboratory <laughs> as a kindly scientist from a superior species <laughs> tries to fathom how your lower brain works. <laughs> is this what you like, is it? Show me on the flashcards if this is what you like. <laughs> banana, banana. <laughs> tie on rope, tie on rope, banana, banana, tie on rope. I mean, stockings are a great example of this. A ridiculous item of clothing, but incredibly specific. This is where the sexy is. <laughs> this exact height is where the sexy is. Don't be going lower than this. No, no, hanging, you've gone below the knee. Ah, pop socks, fuck off, no. <laughs> what? How do we go from this is the best thing you could possibly wear, this is the worst thing, this is the worst thing you would ever wear? That is an eight-inch journey from one part of the leg to another. No, yes, 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 yes. No, 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 no. <laughs> oh, I love it, I love it. Ah, Jesus, put on some slippers and a house coat, and let's knock the whole thing on the head. Bring it up, bring it up, Fritchie, bring it up, over the knee. Oh, lovely, Japanese schoolgirl, loving it. <laughs> oh, French maid, saucy. No, 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 you've gone too far. I know you've gone too far now, right? <laughs> you said lift it up, is this too far? Yes, yes, back down again, back down again. This is where the sexy lives. <laughs> this exact specific height is where, what? What is it in men communally at some primal level that makes us go, do you know what I like? I like a woman who looks like she's been partially dipped in ink. <laughs> oh, we love it in nylon. Not so much in waders, it turns out. Otherwise, men would be gathered by riverbanks constantly during angling tournaments going, look at him in the water. Look at him, that dirty, dirty fisherman in the water. <laughs> you like me waders, boys? Do you like me waders? <laughs> My feet are dry. Entire industries based around being sexually attractive to men that miss the point entirely. It must be a decade and a half since I've been in a pole dancing club. But I remember looking at the lady hanging off the pole or spinning on the pole or hanging upside down off the pole. And you're there going, well done, pet. <laughs> That's fantastic. Who are you doing that for exactly? I just want to look at you. I could revolutionize the pole dancing industry with one move. Just stand next to the pole, take out one boob, bang it against the pole. <laughs> that is all we need to see. <laughs> the work watch, loving the work Watchdog does in hassling small business people. There's nothing like it. What are you doing making a profit, taking money from old people? I, I, I said, oh, you're a monster. <laughs> there is quite a tone to Watchdog, isn't it? Do you know who you should get out of it? And this is as a touring comic, right? And I've traveled around, psychics. We do. You do, do yeah, you? Yeah, we do. Oh, they're glorious, aren't they? They're almost funny. As, a, as con artists go, they are the funniest con artists in the country psychics, right? And by the way, I will say that into any camera, if there's any psychics there thinking, oh, I'll sue. I'd love to see a sue. Could you imagine a court case against a psychic? Do you have any witnesses? They're all around. Right? <laughs> How much fun would that be? Tell me, my old Uncle Kevin, who you can, no one can see, but I can see. Did this woman malign you? Yes, she did, says the Invisible Man. It's really <laughs> glorious, right? Psychics are If you've ever had any idea of going to, like, it's nonsense. It's just people standing up going, John, Julia, James, Gillian, Joe, Joe, Kevin, Kev, Mary, whatever, Bob, right? <laughs> uh, it's nonsense, right? There's a woman who, for legal reasons, I'm not allowed to say what her name is, right? <laughs> is there a barrister in the room, by the way? Do you have a barrister here? Yeah, so we're, we're close. Who you are? What do, what's your name, champ? Mark. 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 What do you do? Trainee solicitor. You're a trainee solicitor. Okay, so you don't get to appear in court, do you? No. Oh man, that's the whole fun of it, though. That would be the gas part, just appearing, just doing the walk in front of the jury. The jury. Oh, ladies and gentlemen of the jury. Now that would be the real gas of it all. You don't get that, do you not? No. No. Oh. Here, let me find out your instincts, though. Maybe you made the right decision, right? When you get to the end of a jury, right? When you get to the end of a jury, you're walking along, and you get to the end, right? And the jury's here. Which way should you turn? Back in yourself. But you're like, boom, like this. Yeah. Yeah. See, that's why you wouldn't have made a good barrister. <laughs> Just that moment there, right? If you're ever in a court, right, and you're ever representing yourself, walking along and blah, 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 your instinct would be to go blah, 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 end of the thing, just go blah, 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 bl
wrong. This is the way you do it. Blah, 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 blah. But I ask you, when you look into the face of my client there, ask yourself, is he not? Not guilty. <laughs> That's how you do it, right? We have a bit of showbiz. Take it for free, right? Anyway, this psychic, this nameless psychic was on recently, this is a completely true story, was on a couple of days before me in a theatre somewhere, right? And died, died roaring, couldn't do it, genuinely, and to the point that the audience turned. The audience were just looking at it going, you can't do this, you're actually bad at this, right? You can't, and they started taking the, just taking the mickey, and started going, give me a name, give me a name, give me a woman's name. Tracy, Tracy perfect, Tracy, let's call her Tracy, right? Tracy, and the, and the audience are going, Tracy, what about my mother? And Tracy would go, is she dead? And they go, no. <laughs> and another voice went, Tracy, what about my sister? And you one goes, uh, is she dead? And we go, no. <laughs> <laughs> and eventually she goes, Tracy, what about my father? And she goes, is he dead? And the voice goes, yeah. And he went, oh, ace, no. Something is coming through. Something is coming through. And the voice goes, ah, no, he's here, sorry. <laughs> Instead, you celebrate the tiny victories, which I applaud. I'm a great man for the tiny victories. I love those victories. My favourite thing about a tiny victory is, if you achieve one, run away. <laughs> Savour the moment and get out of there. Don't let anyone take it away from you. I was at a party, this is years ago, back at home in Dublin, and there's a girl there, and she's obviously an ambassador's daughter. Or, you know, her parents were international engineers or expats of some description. Somebody made the mistake of going, Mary, have you ever lived outside of Ireland? And she launched into a huge long list of places. Oh, we lived in Kenya for a while, then Tanzania, then Calcutta. Oh, the contrast. <laughs> then Delhi, then Durban, then Peru. Now we live in Prague, but we summer in Milan. <laughs> and everyone was looking at her in a very Irish kind of a, good for you, you fucking bitch. <laughs> So I just leaned in and went, wow, it must be great to be part of a circus family. <laughs> and then immediately ran away as quickly as possible. And she's there going, no, my father was a, oh, you're a bastard, right? Yeah. And I spent the entire rest of the party just sneaking up behind her and going, da, 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 da. <laughs> and then running away again. <laughs> My favourite thing, too, though, my favourite thing, I was hosting an awards in Dublin once called the Irish Internet Awards. Right? And I find the whole internet industry very exciting and very interesting in many, many ways. Not least the job. How many of you work in IT, for example? You do, my friend, how are you? Good to have you here, right? It's great you. What's your job title? Developer. You're a developer. See, it's beautiful, isn't it? It's full of amazing bullshit job titles <laughs> that didn't exist 10, 20 years ago. You're a developer, for Christ's sake. Uh, do you have a webmaster in the office? Yeah, of course you do, yeah. <laughs> webmaster is my favourite of all of those. Walking around the office going, I am a webmaster. <laughs> I am master of the web. Feel the power of my firewall. <laughs> it is not actually a wall of fire, no. It is more of a protocol for emails. Anyway, no matter. I am a webmaster. I am not social situation master. No, I can't do that at all, no. I am not talking to women master. No, there are too many variables in that situation as well. I can't be happy with that. That, and my favourite thing about your industry, by the way, is solutions. You do love the solutions, don't you? You know, but the thing, when your computer's not working and you're kind of going, ah, ah gee, it's not working. Get the guy. And the one of you people arrives in, in a cape going, I? I'm a solution provider. <laughs> you, you are problem provider. Back away, problem provider. <laughs> you would not understand my solution. It is too technical for you. Get out, get out of the room. Do not look at the computer. Your eyes hurt the computer. Get out. <laughs> Have they gone? Have they gone? Lovely. Control, alt, delete. Uh... <laughs>